Greetings class. I hope you guys are doing well. I'd like to go over the John Taylor Gatto essay and to start this essay is written by a libertarian and I mean if you look carefully at the essay it does make sense because he believes in small government and he believes in hands off. Um, I think he starts the essay with a pretty good hook. He establishes credibility by saying I taught for 30 years in some of the worst schools in Manhattan so he's been a teacher for 30 years so he's knowledgeable about this topic. Another thing he says in the next couple paragraphs he says that Boredom is a part of our curriculum, it's part of our school system. He says the first problem is that teachers are bored. He also says that students are bored. And um, I, I think those are good arguments. I think that's a tough paper topic because it's hard to quantify boredom. It's hard to talk about how, how to, it's hard to quantify how many people are bored right now. Also, what does boredom mean? But I do agree that some teachers shouldn't be teaching. Some teachers just aren't good at their job. They should t make class more engaging. But I also feel that students should also be doing everything they can to engage in a class, even if they do have a boring teacher. So there's a lot that goes into that one. Um, one of the strongest points he makes in this essay, um, every time I read this, I think about Pink Floyd, we don't need no education, which is a double negative, but we'll, we'll sidestep that. He basically says that we don't need school, and he uses an example of a lot of people who who didn't get have a formal education. He says George Washington, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, um, Melville, Twain, Conrad, Margaret Mead, all these other people, they didn't have an, uh, an education, and therefore he's saying we, we might not need school, we might be able to educate our, ourselves. I think that's a noble idea, and I, I think ideally it would be great if we could all um, educate ourselves. I think that these people are part of the exception. Um, these are exceptional people. Sometimes I hear people say that um, I'll just drop out of college like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and, and I'm not saying um, you're not great or a student isn't great or people aren't great but I, I am saying that um, uh, Steve, Steve Jobs dropped out of Stanford, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard. These people were, were highly intelligent even before they enrolled in school and Bill Gates started his whole business with $50 and now he's a billionaire. How many of us can do that? It's debatable. So I, I think these people are an exception to the rule. Um, I, I do agree with him on some level that, for example, if you wanted to be a writer, you may not need a formal education. Yeah, you might have to learn how to read and write, but you might be able to do that on your own. And in the age we live in, we have a lot of technology around us, so we could learn on, learn on our own if we wanted to. We have more access to education than any, any people in human history. Um, and if you want to be a writer, all you have to do is write. If you write a lot um, and you keep working at it, chances are you'll, be, you'll become good at it hopefully. So I do see that argument. And there's a case for homeschool. Um, a lot of teacher parents are homeschooling their, their, their children today. Um, so maybe we don't need a formal school system. So I see those arguments. But the other side of this would be, imagine living in a world where people aren't educated at all, where, where they didn't go to school, where they had no basic concept of, of math or reading. And, and yes, our schools aren't necessarily great, but at least we go to school and we get some concept of math, we get some concept of writing, some concept of um, geography and all these other studies that if we didn't have these studies before, I, I think that um, we'd become a weaker nation, we'd become a weaker country. So I as a teacher, and you know I'm a teacher, I'm a little bit biased on this one. I'm sorry, it's really hot in my room right now. <laughs> I'm doing this. But um, as a teacher, of course, I'm for education. <laughs> um, I do like his argument um, that he makes on page page three. It's at the very bottom, and he says, Our school has an adjustive function, an integrating function, a diagnostic function, a differentiating function, selective function, pro propedeutic function and he goes on and on well these are big words and if, if you really analyze what he's saying he's basically saying that um basically saying that the whole concept of school is to make us conform that's the only purpose of school is to make us conform to find out if you're a good kid if you're a bad kid if you're a smart kid to find out who your friends are it's more about that than anything else now i i see his point i think it's very valid 
Um, and I think that we, we do teach conformity. I teach conformity. I'm teaching you guys how to write in a certain way. There's millions of ways to write, but I feel that I have to teach you how to write a certain way so that you go to your next class and you write very well. So, I mean, there's that and I do agree with them. And I'm not saying the teachers get together at the beginning of every school year and say, you know what? We didn't make the kids conforming enough last year. We have to work so much harder this year. Uh, I think it's part of our, our humanity is to conform on some level um and i agree that a lot of times school is more about what you're wearing and how cool you are rather than how intelligent you are and for a long time i know it's changing but those who were smart got picked on and so they they were not elevated so i i agree with them on some level that our school is about conformity and i agree with them on that I, that's a very strong argument that he makes um i also like what he says um, I like what he says on page five. It's a paragraph that starts with, I'll read quite a bit of it. He says, it's perfectly obvious from our society today what those specifications were. Well, he goes on and he basically says, we're, we're immature, we're, we're, we're um, a nation of children. Um, we get divorced too easily, we buy things too easily, um, we buy things on television, then we buy the thing, we buy televisions, then we buy the things we see on television. We're consumers, going back to what Horace Mann said, we become a nation of consumers. And he's saying that our schools are making us a nation of consumers. It's propagating consumerism. And I think that's a valid argument. I, I don't know if you could quite blame the school system. If you get divorced and you go to, go to court and say, you know what, it was my school system, they didn't teach me. <laughs> how to manage a relationship or I bought these sneakers they're too expensive it was my school's fault I think on some levels it, we have to take ownership and responsibility but but he is on to something that our schools also teach us to consume as well um, um, for example well I don't want to get into it I'll, I'll leave that for you guys to think about but that's the argument he's making um, near the end of his essay, he has a lot of strong arguments on how to um, create change. Now, in our essay we're writing, we're focusing only on problems, not how to fix them. But he's saying some things we could do is we could teach kids not to be bored. I, I think that's fair. I think that um, we have to have a, a screen in front of us at all times. We have to be doing something at all times. We're, we're not comfortable with being bored. And I, I think he has a strong argument there. He also says we should push children. We, we should up the standards. And I agree with that. I think that's a great argument. We should up the standards, make them, make them higher for students. Um, I think some things that we could do to fix our school system personally, and this is good for you guys to brainstorm too, but I think we should learn foreign languages at younger ages. A lot of times we, we take a foreign language in high school, but we don't remember it because we're not of an age where we can really absorb a language. I think we should have more, um, I, I think we should learn more about the world rather than about our country. I think we should learn Asian history. We should learn African American history, South, South American history. I think that our, our history is very myopic and we're, we're moving into a, uh, economy that's globally based and I think today we need to understand what's going on in other parts of the world and where they come from, who they are, part of their history. And, and unfortunately our schools just focus too much on Western history. Um, I think that we should have more internships. I, I think that um, a lot of people, they they don't know, well I think the issue with college is that they don't, they don't push inter internships on us. And I understand there's issues with free internships. I get that. But I think if you're going to college, one smart thing to do would be to do an internship, hopefully a paid internship. But the issue is that if you don't do an internship, then you graduate and you don't have experience. You have the degree, but you don't have experience. But if you do an internship while you're in college, then you have the experience and you have the degree, which makes you bulletproof. So I think that our schools should be stressing that more. I think K through 12 should have, um, maybe half day of school and then half day you go to 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 work and and the career that you want to do maybe you go volunteer at a, a at a um veterinary hospital maybe you go work at a law firm and do paperwork for them to make sure that that's something you want to do so i think that would be very strong so those are a couple ideas that i have um however notice this i'm talking about solutions and for your paper, you have to focus on problems. So the problem would be we're not doing internships. We're not focusing too much as much on internships. The problem is we're, 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 we're only teaching Western history. The problem is we're not teaching emotional intelligence, which is another great topic. 
Um, the problem is we're, we're, we're not doing work study programs. So those would be the problems. And also just to say this, I think another thing that would be very useful would be emotional intelligence. A lot of Americans don't know how to manage their emotions. And um, I think if you can learn to master your emotions then you can get better with financial intelligence. I think that you get better with um, relationships. And I think that could fix a lot of the things he talks about in that paragraph. Or if we just had more emotional awareness and more emotional studies in school, I think that can make us stronger and smarter. And again, that's the solution. The problem is we're not doing that. That would be the paper topic. And one last thing, he has the most powerful ending I've ever seen in my life. He says, let them manage them own themselves. Let them manage themselves. And basically he's talking about children. And that's a strong statement because every time I, I read this, I think about um, Lord of the Flies where the kids manage themselves and they killed Piggy. <laughs> kids manage themselves. Should we just let them be? Um, on some level, I do think kids need more autonomy. I agree with that. But I, I also think that, that children need guidance. And I think school is a great place. I think if we have more of a socialist system where, where we told a kid, you know what, you're good at, you're good at math. We're going to put you in math classes your entire life. Um, a kid may do great in math for a couple years and decide they like something else. So I, I think that I think they need guidance. If we just let a kid go to school and do whatever they wanted, they don't have the self-awareness to know um, what they're good at, what they'll want to do later, what they'll want to study later and things like that. Sometimes you don't start understanding your talents, your abilities until later in life. And that's why you need teachers to guide you through that. So again, I think that's a great essay. Again, near the end, I went over a lot of great problems for essays. And this is a very philosophical essay. I love this essay. Very powerful. And you, as you can see, it does connect back to Horace Mann, who did say we should become a nation of consumer. I'm sorry, we should become a nation of producers. And here, John Taylor Gatto is saying we become a nation of consumers and it's our school system that's caused this. Very powerful. Thank you for listening.